Here's a mystery. Who exactly wants to see another Sherlock Holmes movie? More than 10 years after the last one, we're about to find out, and the answer probably won't be pretty. I agree it's not my best disguise, but I had to make do. Ben Affleck may be a movie star, but the days of an actor being able to put butts in seats on the basis of their celebrity alone are pretty much over, even for the star of Geely. Knowing this, Disney's release strategy for Deep Water, a film produced under its 20th Century Studios brand, seems to be release the movie quietly in January and whatever happens, happens. In the film, Affleck plays a wealthy husband hoping to stay far away from a pricey divorce by letting his wife, played by Anna de Armas, have extramarital affairs. But he becomes suspect number one when one of her paramours suddenly vanishes. The movie comes out on January 14th, and as of the making of this video, there's not a trailer or even a poster for it yet. With zero hype for the movie so far, Deep Water seems to be in deep… well, you know. Betting against Marvel is like betting against the Harlem Globetrotters. Just because Marvel boasts Earth's mightiest heroes, that doesn't mean the brand is invincible, especially when it's not Marvel Studios, but Sony's Marvel-affiliated Spider-Man spin-off series. Confused? It's hard to tell where Sony's Morbius falls in the canon. We think it's a spin-off of Tom Hardy's Venom series with nothing to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but these days, who can tell? I am Venom. What we do know is that thanks to lots of delays and bad buzz, the anticipation for this movie is colder than its January release date, where Sony is sending it to die a quiet undeath. You may be saying, so what? People said the same thing about Venom. But Venom was one of the 90s most popular comic book villains, and Morbius has always been D-list or lower. It's possible that Morbius will surprise everyone, but it definitely won't be a big shocker if this vampire monster mash mostly just sucks. Video game movies are on an upswing. Based on the recent successes of Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Mortal Kombat, is this a sign of a reversing trend for video game movies, one of the most critically maligned and commercially spurious of all movie genres? Maybe. But we're not betting on it, especially not for the first big screen outing of Nathan Drake. Yes, he's the main protagonist of Uncharted, one of the best selling, most critically acclaimed video game series ever, but the key phrase here is video game. Gamers like playing games as Nathan Drake, they don't necessarily like buying a ticket to watch Tom Holland play a young Nathan Drake. While Tom Holland may be a draw as Spider-Man, everybody is a draw as Spider-Man. Outside the MCU, Holland hasn't shown his mettle, and playing a square-jawed adventurer seems like a stretch for the charmingly befuddled young Brit. Still, we're always up for an old-school adventure. We'll just probably be the only people in the theater. Marvel Studios could probably release a movie about dupe, and it would still gross a billion dollars. Meanwhile, DC's cinematic output has been a little more hit or miss. Joker grossed a billion dollars, Birds of Prey? Not so much. Now, DC is taking a swing with DC League of Super Pets, scheduled for summer 2022. In the animated film, Superman goes on vacation, so protecting the planet is left to his dog Crypto, Ace the Bat Hound, and a League of Super Pets. Crypto and Ace are voiced by Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, stars of the rebooted Jumanji series. They're joined by a stacked voice cast, including Keanu Reeves, Kate McKinnon, and John Krasinski. The Lego Batman movie showed you can make a popular, family-friendly comedy spoofing DC characters. Still, this feels like a charming HBO Max series, not a blockbuster movie families will shell out money for, at least enough to justify what we're sure is a budget pushing $100 million. If it's good, it may make money. If it's so-so, it may end up being more of a wait-and-stream thing. If it's bad, well, it wouldn't be the first DC property to arrive to harsh criticism. I am not someone who is loved. Roland Emmerich's shtick of humans versus world-ending disaster used to be a pretty reliable formula, financially. But for more than a decade, the biggest disasters in Emmerich's filmography haven't been on the screen but at the box office. He hasn't had a hit since 2009's 2012, which predicted the end of the world but actually foretold the end of his impressive run. 
In between, there have been a few misbegotten attempts at small-scale films like Anonymous and Stonewall, peppered with massive bombs like Independence Day Resurgence and Midway. In our prediction, look for Moonfall to continue the downward trend. That might be the greatest sentence anyone's ever said. As the title suggests, Moonfall is about the moon getting knocked out of its orbit and going on a collision course with Earth. It stars Halle Berry and Patrick Wilson, talented value adds in John Wick and Aquaman movies, but not reliable draws on their own. So with an eye-rolling concept and unreliable box office draws, Moonfall has a massive mountain to climb to earn a profit on its reported $150 million budget. Maybe China will save the day, but domestically, the only audience for Moonfall are dudes aged 18 to 34 who are watching it ironically. A prime demo to be sure, but not enough to save Moonfall from crashing to Earth. Nearly 20 years after its original release, Shrek 2 remains one of the 15 biggest animated worldwide hits ever and one of the top five of all time domestically. A big reason why was Antonio Banderas' turn as the swashbuckling Spaniard cat Puss in Boots. The character was so popular that he even inspired his own spin-off, which was a big hit in 2011, grossing $149 million domestically and $554 million worldwide on a $130 million budget. However, 11 years will have elapsed since the original Puss in Boots, and the magic number between sequels is between 2 and 4 years. Any shorter, and you risk oversaturation. Any longer, and you risk the audience moving on. The latter is particularly a risk with animated movies, as the original audience has literally grown up. Disney and Pixar can get away with it, but we don't think Puss in Boots has that sort of staying power. We're predicting the box office for Puss in Boots The Last Wish will stink worse than weak old kitty litter. One of the biggest casualties of the COVID-19 pandemic's effect on the film industry may be Top Gun Maverick, which is now set to arrive 36 years after the release of the original movie. Originally slated for release in the holiday season of 2020, it's now set to take off, finally, in September 2022. As far as release date shuffling goes, Top Gun Maverick has been moved around so much, we feel like we're sitting in the back of an F-16 fighter jet hitting Mach 2. Is that disadvantage made up by the combo of Tom Cruise and nostalgia? We doubt it. Cruise's four-decade movie star run is nearly unprecedented in its level of success, but lately he's only been reliable in the Mission Impossible movies. Maverick is one of his most iconic characters, but Top Gun is memorable in a it-was-on-TBS-in-the-afternoons kind of way, not in a my-family-watched-it-every-year kind of way. There's a difference between genuine nostalgia, a la Jurassic World, and a sequel to a popular movie from a bygone era like Independence Day Resurgence. Decades later, the world doesn't feel like it was begging for a Top Gun sequel. In other words, we just don't think modern moviegoers still have the need. The need for speed. Elle Woods first sashayed her way onto Harvard Law's campus for 2001's Legally Blonde. Fresh-faced Reese Witherspoon proved her box office bona fides with the movie, powering the $18 million film to a $141 million worldwide haul. You don't need a high-priced law degree to know profit margins like that are mighty impressive. Two years later, Legally Blonde 2, Red, White and Blonde brought Elle Woods to Washington, D.C. and put $90 million domestically and $125 million into Studio MGM's pocket. On a $25 million budget, Legally Blonde 2 was slightly less successful and that was the end of the story. Until now. MGM famously had monetary woes throughout the 2000s, which probably contributed to putting off a timely three-peat. In the meantime, the Legally Blonde brand expanded beyond the multiplex to Broadway. So, nearly 20 years later, does the movie-going audience still care about Legally Blonde, a franchise very much of its time? We don't think so. While the plot is unknown, Elwood Saga succeeded because it was the ultimate underdog story. And we're not just talking about her chihuahua. We imagine this movie will rely more on nostalgia than on inspiring new audiences, and in today's movie landscape, that just won't be enough. What? Oh. <laughs> Have we passed peak Sherlock Holmes? Maybe. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's world-famous sleuth first appeared in A Study in Scarlet in 1887, and the character has remained a figure in pop culture ever since. 
BBC's Modern Day Sherlock series brought Benedict Cumberbatch's high-functioning sociopath Holmes to the small screen, and Warner Brothers' Sherlock Holmes films, which turned Robert Downey Jr.'s Holmes and Jude Law's John Watson into Victorian-era action heroes on the big screen. Both 2009's Sherlock Holmes and 2011's Sherlock Holmes A Game of Shadows made a pretty penny earning $1 billion worldwide on a combined budget of $215 million. We imagine Warner Brothers was begging for more sequels, but The Avengers broke records in 2012 and Downey went off to make another million Marvel movies. You know, give or take. So here we are, more than a decade later. Does anyone still care about Sherlock Holmes? The answer is elementary. No, we already know that this particular incarnation of Sherlock Holmes doesn't have the staying power of an all-time great franchise like Star Wars or Toy Story. When was the last time you even thought about it? Our prediction? This'll fall harder than Sherlock off Reichenbach Falls. This may be the Pandora of all hot takes. After all, Avatar is the highest grossing movie of all time with $2.8 billion worldwide. Based on pure math alone, even if Avatar 2 dropped 50%, it would still be one of the highest grossing movies ever with $1.4 billion. Even if it dropped 75%, it'd still be flirting with $1 billion worldwide. This is why we're here. That's the only reason. It's what pays for the whole party. Given China was still a small market when the first film was released in 2009, and a re-release in China is the main reason Avatar reclaimed its title from Avengers Endgame in 2020, are we crazy for including it in our list of movies that will bomb? Maybe. Yet, unlike Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or The Matrix, Avatar didn't have staying power. Sure. Everybody saw it in 2009, but only because we had to. How many kids dress up as Na'vi for Halloween? Where are the Avatar cartoons, video games, and toys? Put simply, who cares? At this point, Avatar 2 has been pushed back six times, will come out 13 years after the first, and reportedly costs $250 million. Avatar 2 may make money, but it's hard to see how its box office could be anything but a pale imitation of its predecessor. And depending on how people react to it, it may pave the way for three more box office disasters in the series' future. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!